The story of Mary and Martha, I think, helps deepen our understanding of what it means to act out our faith, and specifically to be hospitable. And Jesus' response to Martha makes it clear that the one thing necessary for hospitality is not food or a clean house, but rather it's the attention we give to our guest. Eugene Peterson's paraphrasing of this scripture in the Message Bible really drives home the point. And it reads, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course, and it won't be taken from her. Now, obviously, Mary and Martha have different ideas about what is essential. But these two sisters really are like many siblings. They're trying their hardest to distinguish themselves from each other. Plus, they had different personalities. They were concerned with different things. They had different perspectives. They remind me of two friends I had when I was growing up. Tommy and Catherine were their names. They were twins. Now, they were as different as night and day. Tommy loved sports. Catherine loved the theater. He was rebellious. She was obedient. He was happy just to pass his classes. She was a straight-A student. He liked the skater look. She liked the preppy look. They were complete opposites of one another. He even went to CNU and she went to UNC. They shared the same genes and yet they were two completely different people with two completely different temperaments. You know, the world's full of people like this. There are introverts and extroverts. There are busybodies who like constant activity. And then there are contemplative folks who like to sit and be quiet. Now, I think it can be hard for the active person to understand the person who sits and contemplates. And it can be equally as hard for the quiet person to understand why a person always has to be busy. Of course, God made every one of us. And God made Mary. And God made Martha. But when some people look at this story from the Bible and these two women, they think the Bible is comparing two different lifestyles. There's the go and do lifestyle and the sit and listen lifestyle. But one isn't necessarily better than the other because the life of discipleship requires both. We should be eager to work hard like Martha, and yet we should also be willing to sit and listen as Mary did. So I think it's important that we resist that urge to reject one over the other because we really can learn something from both sisters. They both were trying to show kindness and share hospitality with Jesus. They both were trying to act out their faith. And like them, we ought to be people of action. But we need to do this in the right way. Martha wanted to be a good hostess. So she tidied up the house, scrubbed the floors, and cleaned the windows. She carefully planned out a five-course meal. I'm reading in between, between the lines here, but I think that's what she was working on. She was trying to make the perfect setting for Jesus. She even went out and made these amazing appetizers, homemade bread, and fantastic desserts. She wanted to be hospitable. Now the way she acted really isn't all that surprising because she was just trying to practice the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do to you. And frankly, Martha would have loved it if someone would have prepared a feast for her like the one that she was preparing for Jesus and she thought Jesus would love this idea this this dinner but apparently he didn't she misunderstood what Jesus needed because she was listening to herself 
she was listening to what she would want. And sometimes we act like Martha. We want to show kindness to others, but we want to do it in our own way. On the other hand, Mary acted with greater understanding. She understood what was on Jesus' heart and that he needed time to sit and talk and teach. She understood because she listened. Our faith calls us to be people of action, but doing the right thing boils down to listening. And that's what Mary did right. She listened to Jesus' heart while her sister listened to her own heart. Some years ago when I was living in Virginia, I was part of a mission team that went to Austria. We did a lot of preparation for that mission trip because we wanted to use our time wisely and do things the right way. Building relationships with our brothers and sisters in Vienna was one of the most important aspects of that trip. And since we wanted to get off on the right foot, we brought some gifts to share. We brought gifts that we thought they would like. Gifts like Virginia peanuts and t-shirts that said Virginia is for lovers. Now, our new friends liked these gifts, but they weren't the perfect gift. But as we got to know our friends better, as we talked and listened to them, we learned that a much better gift would have been American blue jeans, and specifically Levi's. That's what they really wanted. But who would have thought? It just goes to show that taking the time to listen makes a big difference. Giving the perfect gift is a matter of listening to another person, to listen to what's on their heart, not just what's in our own heart. Now, Martha was trying her hardest to give Jesus the perfect gift and to do the right thing. She did what her mom and her grandmother probably would have done by cooking an exquisite meal. That's what women in her time and her culture were expected to do. And Martha thought this would make Jesus feel welcomed and loved. That's why she prepared a feast. And she would have done the same for anyone who would have been a guest in her home. But Mary was a different story. She didn't want to follow the rules of their culture. She didn't want to spend her time cooped up in the kitchen. And that really annoyed Martha. And Martha let Jesus know it. She said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work? Now, Martha was trying to do the right thing, but she got tripped up because she failed to listen, but not Mary. Mary put aside everything else that was going on in her life, and she chose instead to listen to Jesus. Now, that sounds nice and spiritual to us, but what Mary did was really, really risky. People in her culture expected women like her to be hard at work in the kitchen. And on top of that, by sitting at the feet of Jesus, Mary was acting like a man. Women weren't allowed to sit at the feet of rabbis and teachers and be part of a deep theological conversation. She would have gotten herself into a whole lot of trouble by acting in this way. Jesus could have sent her out of the room. But it didn't matter to him the way she was acting. Because Mary had chosen the better part. She gave Jesus her attention and listened to him teach. She listened to his heart. Now it is important to be kind and hospitable and to practice the golden rule. These are important actions. That's what Martha was trying to do. But we should also strive to listen to what's on the hearts of others. And then to treat them in that way. It's what the old Baptist preacher John Claypool calls the platinum rule. The platinum rule invites us to go beyond listening to what's on our own hearts and our own desires. And it dares us to listen to what's going on within other people. 
and then to see if there is any way that we can meet something that they need according to their preferences. Perhaps that's why we're given two ears. You know, we have one ear to listen to our own heart and our own lives, and we have another ear to listen to other people and what's happening in their lives and what's in their hearts. I think when we really start listening, we get concerned. We get concerned with what we hear. Now, Martha was listening to a lot of different things. She was listening to her culture. She was listening to her own heart. And as a result, she was concerned about many, many things. But not the most important thing. Mary, however, was listening to Jesus. And she was concerned with one thing and one thing only. This shows us that every concern that we have tries to take over our heart and our mind. It tries to become the most important thing. Now, concerns that we have with, say, our jobs or another person or even a hobby can try to take over. But these are just finite concerns that fight with each other for space in our hearts and in our minds. Mary was able to put all these things aside so that she could give her full attention to Jesus. And that's where Martha struggled. She was concerned with the house. She was concerned with the food and who knows what else. But Jesus really wasn't concerned about those things. He didn't need a five-course meal. In fact, I think he would have been fine with a, a simple meal, something like a sandwich. And just think what would happen if Mary had just abandoned the kitchen and joined her sister sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to him. I know at some point people would have gotten hungry. That's the way it is. But then Jesus would have gotten up. He would have gone to the kitchen. And then he would have found some bread and blessed it and broke it. And well, you know the rest of the story, don't you? It's the way Jesus works. Mary remembered that we don't live on bread alone. And as a result, she feasted on the main course and kept her focus on the main thing. She listened to Jesus. But I do think many of us can be like Martha. We feel like we have a thousand things to attend to, but no time to listen to God by reading the scriptures and praying and creating space for worship. And yet, according to this scripture from Luke, what is essential is listening to the Lord. This is what supports every action that we do as followers of Jesus Christ. Now, I think it is easy to overlook the action of listening. And we might not even think of it as an important action. But Jesus said that Mary's act of sitting at his feet and listening to him teach was a fitting use of her time. In other words, she had the right priorities. She was focused on the right thing. So my encouragement to you is to stay focused on the right thing. Let's work hard when we need to work hard, but let's also sit and listen and worship the Lord because this is just as important. If we're not listening to God, then we're shutting ourselves off from the source of life, wisdom, and strength that we need to support our actions. Our actions are important. God expects us to live out our faith, do good works, and treat people well. But in the process, we must not neglect giving time to listen to the Lord. So take time today and every day to listen to God. And let's take a moment one last time just to listen. Listen to what the Lord is saying to you. And so I invite you to close your eyes. As you sit in your pew, picture yourself 
sitting at the feet of Jesus. Listen to what he is saying to you. So let's pray now silently as we listen to what Jesus is saying to us.